two, two. Welcome to what would be meeting two. If we were in class, this would be our second night we meet. And today I'm going to go through some kinematics problems. Uh, do some, um, I did this for you. We got this bad Larry uploaded. All right. Yes, we do. If you haven't gone and got it, I put it in the announcements. Go get it. Do it. Do it. I'm going to go over these problems. Trust me, when I do give you tests, problems that I give you on the test, muy, muy similar to what you get in class when I go over them on the board. So you're going to want those. I'm going to go over these. Um, also, today, if we were meeting, we'd be doing a lab, and I will be doing a lab for you, acceleration due to gravity. We're going to um, get some data for it. You and I are going to be lab partners. Yes, we are. Lucky, lucky me. me I wasn't going to say lucky you, because I'm unlucky for you. You're my lab partner. But lucky for me, you are my lab partner. Okay. Let's get going. That's a different video. All right. For today, I gave you some videos the other day that um, did some real quick definitions of speed, velocity, acceleration. Um, speed and velocity, not quite the same thing. Um, when you're talking about speed, you know, get your speedometer, it tells you how fast you're going in terms of distance over time, okay? But it doesn't tell you what direction you're going, which is what a vector is and velocity is a vector. So if I told you I'm going uh, up 93 um, at 65 miles per hour, don't speed, um, heading directly north, that would be velocity because I gave you that direction. All right, acceleration is how fast you're changing your velocity. So if you're changing your velocity quickly, you're going from zero to 65 in 2.8 seconds, that's a pretty quick acceleration. Your velocity is going from zero to 65 very quickly, so that acceleration. Now acceleration can also be a slowdown, remember. All right, video told you that and so am I. Double telling here, so therefore you can also be slowing down and accelerating. That's weird. You go, oh, I meant that's not acceleration, that's deceleration. Well, yeah, you can call it deceleration or you can call it negative acceleration, but by definition, it's still acceleration. All right, let's take a look at that acceleration. Acceleration, let's get the equation. All of physics is just follow these equations. So the definition is a change in your velocity over some period of time. So when you accelerate, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It takes some time for it to happen. Like I just said earlier, 65 miles per hour from zero to 65 in 2.8 seconds. Okay, it took some time to happen. So we get an acceleration that has a change in velocity over time. All right, there's your equation for it. Very simple. Actually, the, uh, another equation that we have, so we'll start with two equations. Um, velocity is distance over time. This velocity could be instantaneous, meaning at that instant of time, you're traveling at 65 miles per hour, or it could be an average, because maybe you're driving to the store and it takes you an hour to get there, and um, you drove 60 miles to get there. So that would be 60 miles per hour. But that doesn't mean that you were traveling 60 miles per hour the whole time. You could have been stopping, starting, slowing down, hopefully you know, swerving for the chipmunk. Don't hit the chipmunk. So you're constantly changing your velocity, but the average velocity would be 60 miles per hour. You might be going faster or slower. So when we talk about this as being an instantaneous velocity, we just say V is equal to D over T. If we're talking about for an average velocity, we put a bar over the V, then that bar means average. Some of you might have had statistics, and if you have, you recognize, oh yeah, that bar means average. That would be average velocity. Okay, so that's a very simple equation, about as easy as it gets. Just three variables. And this is three variables as well, kind of. I mean, this one has a change in velocity, and that means a difference. So let's dive into acceleration just a little bit. Units, all right, velocity, change. So velocity is gonna be meters per second. In the international system, all right, you saw that you watched that international system video, I hope, yes, MKS. You're gonna hear me say this, MKS. If you screw up, it's usually, well, not usually, I mean, but sometimes it's because you didn't convert into the correct units to put into the equation. So you have to have meters, kilograms, and seconds. So MKS. So this is going to be meters, M per second, S, and this time is in seconds. And if you look at that, some of you might at first glance go, oh, the seconds cancel out. No, they don't. No, 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 no. This is dividing by S, same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would be M over S squared. 
So when you see some distance over time squared, okay, we're not talking about New York. Whoa, 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 whoa it's a good catch, thank you. Uh, no, we're not talking about New York. Time squared, get it? It's funny. Time squared. Yeah, it's funny. You get it. They're talking about an acceleration rate. So this is referring to how much my velocity is changing over some period of time. All right. If I am quick, easy example. Okay, we'll just do, use our brains. We're going to write this down. If I am starting from rest, it's pretty good, wasn't it? Starting from rest, and I decide to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second squared. In other words, one meter per second every second. So my velocity is going to change by one meter per second every second. So at the end of one second, I would be moving. Well, I changed by one meter per second in that second, so I'd be moving at one meter per second at the end of the first second. At the end of the second second, so after two seconds, I would be moving, well, how fast? Well, I changed by one meter per second the first second, then one meter per second the second second, so I'd be going two meters per second after two seconds. So we can kind of think that through. Now that's, of course, an easy problem. I'm talking about starting from rest. I'm talking about one as my acceleration rate. Yeah. Life isn't always that easy in physics. Okay, so this is a change rate per unit of time. Okay, now, our first of the big three. This first video here today would be on the big three. You've heard of the big three. You know... Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, 2008 Celtics, big three. And no, not that big three. But some of you do know what I'm talking about. You should do. Well, see, you know. I knew you knew. All right. Now, the big three are the big, well, the important, not that those, that, that, that those equations are important. I don't want any equation to feel bad about itself. They're all important. But there are three equations which you will use repeatedly throughout this semester when things are moving. Okay, and they don't just go away after this unit. Sometimes they'll come back to bite us in the butt. All right, so we have to make sure we know the big three. And the big three, yeah, you can put them in any order you want, but I usually will give them and teach them this way, are final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So Vf is final or the ending velocity. Vi is the initial velocity. Sometimes it's zero. Starting from rest, it would be zero. Sometimes it's not. Acceleration in time. All right. Now this is actually, if you look at this, this one's actually derived from the equation I just had on the board. Because the acceleration equation is change in velocity. And how do you get change in anything? Okay, the weather today, the temperature outside today, that's why I'm wearing a nice Hawaiian shirt on because it's getting warmer out. Woohoo! Finally, getting some warm weather. Um, 72 degrees. Uh, let's see, last week it was like 57. So let's see, what's the change in temperature from one week to another? I'm 57 to 72. Do the math on that. Carry the thing down. Uh, I may have a calculator. That's hard. 72 minus 57. Uh, what'd you get? 15? 15? Okay, 15. So the change in temperature is, of course, in change in anything is always subtract. So if I want to get the change in velocity, I'm going to subtract. Usually, not always, but usually our velocities end up faster. We could be slowing down. A lot of times they're speeding up. So Vf minus Vi, final velocity minus initial velocity, that's my change in velocity divided by time. And then I just took this equation and went whit, 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 and I got that. So that first of the big three is derived from that acceleration equation. Okay, there are two more big threes. These have a little more difficult derivations. I'm not going to require you to know the derivations. Just know how to use the bottom line equation. The second one is set up for distance. Distance is vi t plus one half a t squared. So initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Okay, there's our second one. All right, third equation. Uh, you might see it set up differently, but a lot of times you're trying to find final velocity in kinematics. Kinematics, kinny means motion. K k k kinetic energy, energy of motion. So the prefix K-I-N-E means motion. Kinematics, motion study. Study of motion. So when we're doing that, we usually want to find final velocity. So I set this equation up for final velocity for you. Equal to the square root on VI squared plus 2 a. D. And you might see it differently. 
but I set it up for the final velocity. Um, one quick word going back to acceleration. Earlier we were talking about acceleration can be decelerating or negative acceleration when it's slowing down. Um, so, but by definition, I'll go back to that equation again. The definition of acceleration is change in velocity over time. So if your velocity is changing, you're slowing down, red light, okay, you're going 40 miles an hour, you come to a stop at zero, you're slowing down. Is your velocity changing? Yes, it is. You know it is. So by definition, even though you're slowing down, you're still accelerating. I know. Hard to get our brain around that, but that, that is correct. We're accelerating when we're slowing down. All right? Go ahead. Freak your friends out at the next party you're at. Okay? Tell them about that. Mm hmm Yeah. That'll get them. That'll get them. Uh, the other thing is kind of nifty cool, as I like to just go over quickly, is about acceleration. Your car has many accelerators. It has, yeah, a number of accelerators. No, it doesn't. It only has the, like, the gas pedal. That's the accelerator. That's, that's it. That's all it's got. Well, now, no, we just went over. The, you can accelerate by slowing down. So what's the second one? Yeah, the gas pedal, acceleration, because you're changing your velocity by speeding up. Brake, you're accelerating because you're slowing down. You're ready, you're still not done yet. Still not done yet. Um, hmm, what about this thing here? Hands on the wheel, two o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. That's an accelerator. What, it's a steering wheel, it's an accelerator. It is, how is that an accelerator? Okay, remember we just defined what velocity is. Hopefully you watched that video on velocity too. And you know now that velocity has two parts to it. It has speed and direction. If you change any of these, you're changing your velocity because these are in velocity. So if you change your speed, gas pedal, brake, you're changing your velocity, you're slowing, you're slowing down, speeding up, you're accelerating. Direction. Mm-hmm. The steering wheel changes your direction. In order to change your direction, actually to get into physics down the road that's really important, force is equal to mass times acceleration, you can't change direction without a force being applied. Force will cause acceleration. Steering wheel will change that direction. Okay, that will, the force will be applied, you will accelerate. So by changing your direction, you are changing part of the velocity vector. You are accelerating. I know, weird, but going in. So you could be traveling down the road, going around a rotary or a roundabout. It depends what kind of part of the country you're in. Call them rotary, where I'm from. You go around that rotary, put it in cruise control. Put it at 10 miles an hour. And you just go around and around and around. Try it. All the cool kids do it. You go round and round and round. You at 10 miles an hour. Are you accelerating? Yes, you are. Very good, Billy. Very good. Yes, you are. Because you're changing your direction, you are accelerating. Again, weird, right? Physics, the science of weirdness. The science of boom, blew your mind. Don't do drugs. Do physics. Okay. All right. So we've got our big three. We did a quick review of acceleration, important points, velocity, and we're going to use these to solve our kinematics problems. So what I'm going to do now, since I've introduced you to them and did some review in this video, and I want this, we'll keep this video kind of short, so I'm going to stop this video, but in the next video we'll dive in. If you haven't done it, go get these, okay? I put them in the announcements for you. Uh, put that in there, so go get them. We're going to go over them, all right? That's next. But back.